This is an interesting challenge that a user on the Fusion 360 forum has. Um, he's got this step file that was exported from another CAD system from PTC Creo and uh, he needs to do some modifications to it. And the problem with this is that those modifications would be much easier to do if this would be a mesh model, a sub-D model, or maybe a T-spline. And I think looking at this, looking at how the NURBS patches are laid out, I'm sure this was created in PTC uh, Creo's plugin called Freestyle that also allows you to do some sub-D modeling techniques similar to T-splines. And uh, so the question is, how do we get back to that? And uh, we can do that, actually. We can go here into the sculpt mode. We already are in sculpt mode. And the timeline is turned off because I'm going to turn this into T-splines and it doesn't make a lot of sense to work with T-splines in a timeline environment, uh, at least not if it's purely a T-spline design, which is, that's what we're going to do. Um, and also, some of this is going to be fairly repetitive, so I'm going to not talk much, but just simply talk, turn time lapse on. So, the question is, how was this actually created? And I already said some of that has been done with a sub demodeling technique, but not all of it. For example, these uh, these eyebrows here, that seems to be simply a swept circle, and uh, some uh, spheres on the end, and uh, then this. Um, Zigzag line, that's what, this was cut in using a solid modeling technique. Um, then the tail here, that the, the tail here as a whole was probably also somewhat uh, sub-D model, but then because it didn't match here with the front, uh, stuff was cut out and later on back patched in with, with this here. Uh, in Fusion, you'd probably use the, the, uh, the patch environment for that. But the whiskers, the face, the ears, that's all T-splines. Oh yeah, and this, this ugly fillet here, that was also done with a solid modeling technique. Um, but anyway, so how do we turn this into a T-spline? Utilities, convert, and b rep phase to T-splines. And I'm just gonna pick this one here. And it looks like it matches fairly well. But the problem with that is the way it creates a T-spline is all quads, but here at the top, we're gonna have triangles. And if I mirror this, and merge the vertices, which is a technique that I'm going to use fairly frequently, it's going to create pinching. So the bottom pill here, this part, you may want to consider just using a quad ball or really just, you know, solid modeling and lofting to create this pill. So we're not going to turn this pill into a T-spline, but we, what we can turn into a T-spline is, for example, this here. So it suggests a 4x4 layout, and I'm happy with that. And um, I OK that. And then I'm going to repeat that here. And there it also suggests 4x4, but I, that's a little too dense. What I want, I want these edges to line up with these edges, because later on I want to merge those. Um, I want to merge these vertices. Okay, turn this off. And I'm going to merge this edge here. And sometimes when those edges are pre-aligned, so to speak, selecting that doesn't really work the way I hope for. So I'm just going to merge the vertices one by one, weld the vertices. Takes a little longer, but actually isn't really that bad. Okay, so, and those ones as well. And okay, so that's one nice T-spline here. I think I still need to weld those. Yes, so now it's one, that whole thing is one T-spline. So let's see how that matches with our body. Actually, it's not too bad. And we're not looking for 100% accurate replica of that, uh, of that geometry there. So some of this is going to be certainly a little bit tuck and pull to get to a more accurate shape. So what I'm doing right now here is I'm tinkering out 
with individual vertices. But what you can also do, you can use the modify pull, and that pulls the vertex that you uh, snap to. Let's cancel that. That pulls the vertex to that uh, surface that is above it or below it, to the next closest surface. Um, I'm going to turn on mirror. So symmetry, sorry, modify and pull. All right, not. Uh, not 100% accurate, but pretty close, actually. Close enough for, for our purpose. I could, of course, give that bottom part a different color to really see where my surfaces don't match, but I can't see it this way as well. And that's uh, that's good enough. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to turn on time lapse and uh, so I wouldn't bore you too much. And I'm not going to complete that entire object here. I just wanted to demonstrate the technique.